my name is Chaniga, and today me and my co-author Jiyun are going to present some findings from our literature review. The title of our literature review is Vascular Ehlers Danlos Syndrome, Recent Advancements of Potential Treatment Review. And we are trying to see if there are any new potential treatments for vascular EDS patients. So VEDS is a rare genetic disease due to heterozygous or homozygous mutation of the COL3A1 gene, where the gene is responsible to encode alpha-1 chain of the type 3 collagen. In these patient, patients, we, uh, we could find that there is a usually lacking and normal production of collagen type 3, which this result in weakening of the blood vessels. So they have a high risk of having spontaneous and sudden rupture of the blood vessels, which is often fatal. We attempted to gather some of the potential treatments from recent research papers to discuss the possibility and limitation of potential treatments. After reviewing the research papers, we are going to share three potential treatments, including the management. The first one is the method to restore normal alpha-1 chain of type 3 collagen by introducing a transcription factor nano. The idea is suggested and tested by a group of scientists in the States and published in the FASEB journal recently. The paper suggested that by introducing a transcription factor nano, it upregulates the collagen type 3 expression, allowing normal type 3 collagen formation process to restore. The nano binds to SMART2 and SMART3 to reactivate the transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta pathway, at the same time that regulates the negative factors. TGF beta pathway induces collagen type 3 expression. In this case, vascular EDS patients might restore the ability of collagen type 3 production and halt the unwanted symptoms such as vessel rupture. However, these experiments are purely done in vitro using a cell line from a 73-year-old donor and human neonatal dermal fibroblasts from four skin tissues. Examination on whether nano gene could be successfully transduced to the body of a mammal and to test the visibility of expressing nano gene in the mammal body after transduction have to be done. In a genetic aspect, the patients must possess heterozygous mutation of the gene. If the patient has a homozygous mutation, there will be a no normal COL3A1 gene to produce normal collagen type 3. Such limitations could be overcome by introducing the COL3A1 together with nano gene during the transduction. However, this might increase the difficulty of the process of restoring the expression of the gene. The second potential treatment is for prevention purpose. It is basically a method to strengthen the walls of the blood vessels to prevent serious complications caused by vascular EDS, such as aortic rupture. The method is suggested by a group of scientists from Switzerland. They found that serpol or doxycycline can improve the biomechanical integrity of the aortic wall, which may potentially reduce the risk of dissection and rupture of the aorta. But since doxycycline is a board range antibiotic, which may cause certain number of side effects, including an antibiotic microbial resistant problem. Serifol is relatively more suitable for a long-term treatment. The team of scientists tested Serifol on a mouse model and concluded that Serifol is able to strengthen the aortic wall in the mouse. The results suggested that treating doctors can prescribe Serapolo as a preventive medication to VES patient as to avoid fatal complication of aortic rupture. The biochemical reasoning for the Serapolo to enhance aortic wall is that Serapolo activates nitric oxide synthase, producing more nitric oxides. This results in a de decrease of reactive oxygen species which reduce the vascular oxidative stress. The process enhances the biochemical strength of the aortic wall. There is no major limitation on this treatment since it is more like a preventive prevention management. 
Uh, however, the patient will be required to take Seroquel for a very long term or even lifelong. Studies on side effects for long term consumption should be done to avoid any unwanted or life threatening side effects. Last but not least is to control normal COL3A1 expression with RNA interference and microRNA. RNA interference and microRNA are utilized in this method to regulate the COL3A1 expression. The treatment was suggested by a team of Japanese scientists previously. The research had proven the effectiveness of down-regulating gene expression of the mutated COL3A1 gene and degenerating the mRNA transcribed from the mutated COL3A1 gene using microRNA. By doing this, they got rid of the abnormal alpha-1 chain of type 3 collagen. However, the expression of normal COL3A1 gene will remain insufficient. They then introduced the lysyl oxidase LOX to increase the expression of the normal COL3A1 gene. The treatment has the same limitation, which is that both of them are restricted only to patients with heterozygous mutation of the gene. More high potential advancements are being studied, including gene therapy utilizing transcription factors and more personalized medication. However, more studies are needed to be performed in order to incorporate these promising treatments into clinical settings. Thank you very much everyone and we hope you enjoy our presentation.